The Orange Democratic Movement is experiencing sharp divisions due to the contentious BBI debate. One faction seems to be suspicious of a seemingly betrayal from the Jubilee camp, while the other faction, led by Jeanette Muhammad, believes the handshake is still intact. Namukene Samuel, our political reporter, spoke to different political analysts and politicians to understand the politics of betrayal on the political puzzle. There's nothing that is going to make that BBI be stopped. I truly believe deep down that the referendum is going to pass. The opposition as it is right now is more or less dead. We know that it doesn't matter what anybody says, we must have essence our referendum. Since the inception of the Building Bridges Initiative after the famous handshake on the 9th of March 2018, things haven't been smooth in the ruling party, as well as its relationship with the Orange Democratic Movement as anticipated after the handshake. So for them to have a handshake, obviously you see we were at a, we were at a, at a, at a strange time where the president by then had been sworn in, then Raila had taken the people's oath, he was being called the people's president. They were talking about how we need to separate Kenya or actually uh, have two, 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 two countries like what happened in Sudan. It is not the, uh, you know, the choice of state operatives or, or government to determine what goes to a referendum or what doesn't because the constitution already sets out under Article 255 what matters if you want to amend must of essence go to uh, a referendum. At first, the Tanga Tanga faction was the first to notice the malicious move after the handshake claiming that it was a move to endorse Raila Odinga for the top seat come 2022. The deputy president is looking at the next election in 2022. President is looking at the next generation by introducing the BBI and eventually the rebirth, a, a new constitutional dispensation. Less than a year later, ODM is in the same port sensing betrayal and mischief. And uh, the challenges that BBI is facing are very grave challenges because out of uh, how many, out of the, 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 the total number of, con of, of uh, county assemblies that passed the Building Bridges Initiative draft, only 11 of those county assemblies actually passed the correct original legitimate bill. Therefore, that's the challenge number one. Because if only 11 county assemblies got the original bill, then it means that, you know, they haven't met the threshold of the 24 county assembly. In which case then, if we were to go by the constitution of Kenya, then, you know, it ends there. It means that, you know, it didn't pass the county assembly and so therefore the bill has been thrown out. As far as the referendum is concerned, the timetable is also uh, set not by those mandarins in government, but by the events uh, themselves that precede the referendum. As a party... Our position is that we cannot have a referendum together with uh, the election. The first sign of betrayal was during the BBI popularization campaigns, where the rallies were purely led by Raila Odinga while his new ally Uhuru Kenyatta snubbed the campaigns. If we were going, we were following the constitution anyway, at the point where the chair of IABC, Chebukati, came out and said that he did not print any copies, that he received copies and distributed copies. At that point, then, you know, um, the, the, the process was already flawed because the, the process, the proper process is that whoever is pushing for a bill then gives one original copy to IABC. I personally have not seen such agreement. Uh, these gentlemen were, you know, uh, gracious enough to make public, uh, you know, uh, the context or the content and the text of the agreement. Mm -hmm. Everything that was contained in the agreement was reduced into writing and uh, any other, you know, uh, speculation is just that. What seemed to be the second sign of betrayal was the referendum debt. And I want to be very careful. I think and I believe that the system, if the system wants this referendum, we are going to have a referendum. So the question then becomes, are we going to pass the bill or not? And I still believe that uh, even if a majority of Kenyans would probably not want to, to push for that referendum, I truly believe deep down that the referendum is going to pass. Now, the pertinent question raised was the Building Bridges Initiative used as a bait to tame the growing influence of Raila Odinga in the country. The referendum showdown was supposed to end this year on June, but it seems the Orange Party has to wait a little bit longer. With the raging Building Bridges Initiative drama, a section of leaders allied to Raila Odinga are now sensing 
betrayal. After President Kenyatta locked down the five COVID-19 red zone counties on March 26th, all political activities were suspended, thus derailing the implementation of the Building Bridges Initiative. Less than a month later, the Speaker of the National Assembly and Senate called the MPs from recess to discuss and pass the bill in order to allow it to head a referendum. But this wasn't the case. So, I mean, these are challenges that if you ask me, because I know, I know that the, the, the drivers of this initiative will do everything in their power to make sure that this bill passes, um, I foresee that they will go, they'll use the, the, the route of um, saying that the Attorney General is now, you know, ensuring that the draft bill is within the Constitution and is therefore going to edit the typos, blah, 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 and uh, bring back uh, a draft which um, will reflect on the draft that the one million Kenyans actually signed a signature, assented their signatures to. The BBI bill also received a major blow after it was discovered that only a total of 13 counties ascended on the right bill. I think... Uh, there's a lot, to, there's a lot to, to question on what processes we are following, but um, you know, one would argue in the interests of uh, the public, the one million people who have signed this uh, bill, in the interests of peace and the political stability and all sorts of other things that you'd argue in terms of saying, let us just, you know, find a way to make this thing pass. I think that is the route that we are going now. During the second BBI reading, the bill at the Senate was different in some articles compared to the bill at the National Assembly. MPs dismissed this claiming it was a typographical error. And then it went to the county assemblies, it was equally passed. Then now coming to National Assembly, which consider it passed as we speak, because uh, there's nothing that is going to make that BBI be stopped You're at the National Assembly. Set. Everything is set and BBI is going to pass. And after that, We'll go to the people to decide, of which I know that uh, the people will decide on a positive note for the BBI to pass, and let's expect a new constitutional dispensation. It is now just a matter of time before we separate chaff from wheat in the BBI politics. Namkana Samuel, Switch TV, Nairobi.